uh, Jeremy Gorelick, the uh, writer, director, executive producer of The Wedding Ringer in a theater near you tomorrow with the hilarious Kevin Hart and the hilarious Josh Gad. Good yes. to see you, sir. It's great to see you. It actually opens uh, opens tonight. Tonight. Can, tonight. See, you you've got the midnight screenings. showings. Yes. And it helps. I mean, any it all helps, right? It, it all helps, helps especially okay. uh, American snipers uh, coming on strong this weekend. So right. it's us against American snipers. Well, I mean, at least you and know. And Paddington Bear and uh, Black Hat. There's a lot of movies out there. In the well, I don't today. think any of them sound like yours, right? So Very if you want to see like the comedy, straight up comedy, the hilarious Kevin Hart comedy. That's your, this is your I movie. Will, I will guarantee, personally guarantee that our movie is much funnier than, than American, American Sniper. Sniper. Guarantee. <laughs> yeah. Guarantee. You know what? That's a very long limb you're going on out, sir. Yes. You know, it's a very, very long limb. Although Brad Cooper is very funny in the film, the, in He's, American Sniper. Yeah, yeah, laugh out loud funny. There's yeah. all that sort of, that sort of uh, craziness in well, that. Of, of the hangover. It's the craziest <laughs> of the hangover. He brought it to American Sniper. Now, were you part of the, uh, the hangover? The first movie? hangover. Todd Phillips and I, um, we rewrote the the script, and right. uh, and Todd's been a mentor of mine for years, and um, yeah, I was there from from start to finish on no that. No um, We've got uh, we've got uh, Jeremy Gorelick here in studio. He's the uh, writer, director, executive producer of The Wedding Ringer. Uh, you're a Jet fan, right? <sighs> yeah, okay. I'm I'm a Jets fan. And I could tell that you're a hardcore Jets fan because of the just side. by the sign. Oh man, the exhale and the sign. Yeah, you know. man, I was um. You know, a friend of mine uh, wrote a piece uh, a while ago on something I said about um, comparing Hollywood to being a Jets fan. And how does that work? I, you know, I had um, I'd always um, I told people to you have to celebrate as a Jets fan. You have to celebrate the first downs. Mm -hmm. People would come to when I was going to the Jets games with my dad. We'd sit all the way at the top, um, and the Jets fans would go crazy every first down we got, mm -hmm. and. I would explain to people like that we don't score that many touchdowns. Mm -hmm. For us, we just have to celebrate the first downs, and it's the same thing in 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 Hollywood. You know, you 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 make minor accomplishments, mm -hmm. you have to celebrate them because it's very rare that you're. Well, score what a is touchdown. the minor accomplishment that would be equivalent to a New York Jets offensive first down? First down, you know, finishing a screenplay. You know, having somebody read the screenplay and tell you it's good. Mm -hmm. You know, it took 14 years from writing this screenplay, The Wedding Ringer, to getting it released tonight. Uh, at every no theater. 14 years. 14 years. So did you know a wedding ringer? Is that what you're saying? I, mean, I kind of was. It's, I kind you of were was the wedding a ringer. wedding ringer. Yeah, you know, a, a buddy of mine, or he, uh, a guy I went to high school with, um, who I was in gym, I picked him in for, I picked him in gym class. He was not, you know, I was mm -hmm. just trying to be nice. He, uh, you know, I think he kind of fell in love with me at, after I picked him. Okay. Um, and, uh, I get a call like years later, uh, hey, Rebecca and I are, not gonna say her mm -hmm. real name, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tina and I are, nice. are getting, thank you, Tina and I are getting uh, married. I'm like, congratulations. Uh, in my mind, I'm like, who's Tina? I don't know who Tina is. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, and I would be really honored if you would be part of the wedding party. And I had no idea what to say. I was like, what do you say to that? I was like, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. That was my exact, sure. Yeah. I, I'd be, Thank you, I, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So a year later, I went to the wedding and uh, the guy literally had no friends. And oh she my. had like 14 beautiful, perfect bridesmaids. And I was just sitting there and uh, I was telling stories like, oh, yeah, we were in gym class. We used to love each other in gym class. Well, that was weird. We, yeah, we didn't love yeah. each other in gym class. We helped each other out. And yes. no, also <laughs> not the right thing to say. Yeah. Um, and I was making this guy look great to his friends and fa to his family and uh, I was sitting there thinking wow I should be getting paid for this and then I was like that's an interesting idea. And now hopefully movie. starting tonight at midnight you will get paid for yeah, it. Yeah starting That's tonight at about. midnight The <laughs> Wedding Ringer. Jeremy Gorelick the uh, writer, director, executive producer of The Wedding Ringer is right here in studio. We're going to take a 60 second break when we come back uh, we'll talk about some other things going on in the National Football League. The Bay Area have two new head coaches. Uh, Ray Lewis making some news in regards to Tom Brady, which is fighting words in certain parts of this country. Uh, and we'll also come back with your phone calls. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. 844-204-RICH is the phone number for you to dial. Do we have phone calls? Do we have phone calls? We do. We do. You got, oh. um, we got a couple actually. One of them on the poll question, which I think is a pretty glaring omission that we left okay, off. Okay, well, we'll, we'll a let's, glaring we'll, omission. We've got Jeremy Gorelick, the executive producer, writer, director of The Wedding Ringer, that's out tonight. 
at midnight Eastern time. Go to see it in a midnight movie or spend your time in the uh, movie theater seeing The Wedding Ringer. Uh, let's take a phone call with Jeremy right here. Let's take the one on the poll question. Who is it, Law? You got Nick in South Carolina. Nick in South Carolina. You're on the Rich Eisen Show. How you doing, Rich? Thanks for taking my call. You got a brother? Um, I just wanted to comment on the poll question. I really think that if I have my choice of any of them, I'd have to go with other, and I'd have to take a green jacket from the Masters. Oh, oh good one. Oh, Lord. How did I leave the green jacket um, off? You know, well, I made this guys, poll question up about two minutes. A lot of guys, when they get off, you know, when they are off season, a lot of guys like to play golf. And I just think that it would be, you know, I'd like to be able to go to the dinner and all that kind of stuff. I think it'd be cool. Interesting, Nick. Uh, it's a tradition unlike any other, correct? You know what yes, I mean? Yes, absolutely. I would say so. I know. Um, what do you think? What would you shoot if I put you out on that course right now, Nick? <laughs> what would you shoot? Um, I'd probably have to take an abacus with me to tell you the nice. truth. I don't know. It would be pretty difficult to figure out my score. Come on, Nick. Give me a um, number. Give me a number. Be honest. And it have to be in the hundreds, oh, 120, have. 125 at least, yeah. maybe more. You know, I, 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 I would think um, I'd, I'd have to be a – are you a golfer, Jeremy? I'm not a golfer. Okay, yeah. Mini golf. A mini golf. Yeah, there yeah you go. mini golf. Oh, yeah. So what would you – like with your putter, with your flat stick on the, rolling, the rolling greens of the Masters? Yeah, what, what that's would you all be? I use. What would I shoot? Yeah, what do you think? Too much. Too much. Too much. I don't know what the number would be like on the scorecard. But I, yeah, read the poll question, uh, Brock. Well, I'm adding Masters green jacket to Don't, it. just don't go with the flow. Just go Why with Why not? You... That's a pretty good one. But does, that, doesn't that skew the results that's already been? Well, I mean, I mean, we're not. This is not the imitation game, right? We're not. Yeah, we're no, not we don't not. have Alan Turing going with the uh, with the the numbers here. We're not trying to end the war. We're not Rich. cracking enigma. Yeah, is we're, what you're we're, ju we're just trying. Okay. We're just trying to get a poll question. What prize would you most want to win? What prize? Super Bowl ring, Oscar statue, Stanley Cup, Nobel Prize, Olympic gold medal, and thanks to the caller, Masters green jacket. What do you got, Jeremy? Wow. You're going to go off. Um, right? No. What? No. Okay. I, if, if, if anybody's seen the wedding ring, they'll, they'll know I do not go Oscar. Uh, okay. I would go Super Bowl ring. To me, I would go Super, Super Bowl ring. I was a football player, so that you would were, be. I was. I was a football player. I played in college. And, uh, you, what, I, I went to you? Yale. I know. And well, I was where'd a, you go? What'd you play? I was a running back. I was a running back. Um, you could probably look up my stats. I had a, uh, probably I averaged about 1.4 yards a carry. Okay. Um, 1.4 yards. Real a carry. solid. Real solid. Right. Um, no, I. Was, how many How many Jewish fullbacks have there been in the history? In of, the history of of, 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 call, life. of, no, life. of life. Of life. Six. <laughs> there have been six. They so you could count on house. two hands. I could count on two hands. They were all at my house right. uh, last week for Shabbat dinner. No, no, <laughs> no. Here's it, it, my mom. Uh, went to a Michigan game with me because that's where I went. To, I went to Michigan. Uh, there were no Jewish fullbacks in Michigan, from what, from what I could tell. There were a lot of fullbacks. Sid Luckman was he? At Michigan? Well, he was a he's a quarterback. Oh yeah, all know. right. Yeah. Crazy legs, Hirsch. Crazy legs. Leroy. Uh, there was there was there Hirsch. was a Hirsch, uh, and he did have crazy legs that I knew of. Right. But uh, he had no football. He didn't, definitely didn't play. Right. Even not even an intramural <laughs> at, at Michigan. Um, but my mom, uh, when we saw, watching a game. There was a roughing the kicker penalty. Okay. We we're sitting in the big house, me and my mom sitting in the big house, and she's like, what was that? And I explained to her that you're not allowed to touch the kicker. And she goes, oh, I would have allowed you to kick. That's what she said to me. Look at that. My Jewish mother. Did your Jewish mother have any issues with you playing football? You know, my, this is, this is a little, my mother was a little, um, a little bit, uh, I, she, she was super overprotective, but she wanted me to be tough. She raised me to be tough. Right. And, um, we used to have the games, and she would come to the games, and everyone would be, you know, yelling, go, you know, go, right. Joey, go, Timmy. And she used to hold up a big sign that said, be careful, Tatala, <laughs> which was, was quite embarrassing to me. I've never seen a sign like yeah. that before. Yeah, it was quite embarrassing. Normally, two Jewish guys talking about their mothers, you know what, that's called therapy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this has been a very therapeutic conversation <laughs> right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Um, so uh, before we go to break, uh, the news out of the Bay Area is two more head coaching jobs filled, correct? Filled. So cross that off the list of talk about with Schefter later on. Yep. Jim Tom Sula, who Rod Woodson and I called his Rhine Fire game back in 2006 uh, from, the, from NFL Films. Yeah, he cut his teeth over at NFL Europe. On NFL Network. Wow. We covered his Rhine Fire game. Covered in quotes. I'm air quoting for those listening to this program. Um... Yeah. So he, now we have three jobs left. So what that he's now the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers, and I, I just don't know how that sits amongst the 49er fandom 
that they say, Jim Harbaugh, you and your best ever first four season record in the history of San Francisco 49 football, we're, we're letting you go. We're doing the conscious uncoupling with you and bringing in a guy that few people have ever heard of. And there's many people who say he's, he's got the fire. He put the fire in Ryan Fire. He's, he's a very fiery guy. He was the interim when Singletary got Correct. Canned. And I don't know how that's going to sit. That could be a very difficult sell job to the 49er fan base. You win games, though? Sold. And Jack Del Rio is now the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. You like Todd Bowles for the Jets, Jeremy? You know what? I, I was a big Rex fan. I was a big Rex fan, but um, I'm looking forward to Todd Bowles. We'll see what, what, he, what he brings. I was a big Rex fan. I was, I was sad to see him go. Yeah. I really was. Okay. It was, hard, it was hard to watch him go. He sent me, uh, he sent my son a football um, when he was born and said, uh, my son's name is Zion. Dear Zion, mm -hmm. uh, go Jets, mm -hmm. Rex Ryan. And I still have it. I, can you, should you keep that ball? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. You'll tell Zion one day that there used to be a coach for the New York Jets. Yeah. Who went up to Buffalo and won three Super Bowls oh, for them. He's, yeah, they're going to win up in <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> I have a feeling, especially with that pizza. Oh, and, my gosh. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.